Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. As always, I'm Billy. My man is Dame here with me, and today we're going to be continuing our top ten rankings going into next season. So today we're going to be ranking the top ten shooting guards going into the 2023-2024 NBA season. I gotta say. I'm pretty comfortable with my list. I know I was a little foot floppy even as we were going through the list with the point guards. But once I put my top 10 together, I looked at it. I went through it a couple times. And, and I like the way that everything shaked out. So I'm excited to go through it. But before we get into all that, going to start it off as we always do. First time we're recording at night. So how was your day? How was your weekend today, Dame? My weekend was good, man. Weekend was, was a little busy. Was a little hectic. But, you know, we still got to get this pod out. So we're recording at night time, but you know, got my top 10 list. I'm ready. I'm locked in. Let's go. I'm excited. Gonna go ahead and get the housekeeping out of the way as always. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. You already know the deal. If you're on audio platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, five star review, pre download the show, help us out a ton. Follow the socials at the bottom at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram, at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. Y'all went crazy on the Steph Curry short that we put out on Instagram over I think like 1550 likes uh, definitely over 1500 likes and counting still going like 200 comments y'all are arguing in the comments non-stop um some of it's good debate some of it y'all are tweaking but nonetheless <laughs> we appreciate the support as always uh, about to hit 150 on the IG we grinded for 250 and after we hit 250 we're not grinding for 500 we're grinding for a thousand so Facts. that's the goal. We've got big goals. You're going to try to hit a thousand on the IG before. I said we could probably do it before the end of the year. So if you have us uh, follow the social channels, go ahead and do that. Um, and we're going to go ahead. We're just going to hop right into to the shooting <clears throat> guard list. Um, I'll, I'll kick this one off because you started the, the top 10 list um, for point guards. And I feel like just off of who this guy is as a player, he's probably going to be in your 10 slot too because – just the way I was going through it, there's no way I feel like you could put him any higher or any lower. Okay. Yeah, at my 10th spot, I have CJ McCollum. Okay. Um, we like we we know what CJ is. We know what he is. All right, he's going into this is gonna be oh, you're 13 for him. Yeah, he's been in league for a yeah, little minute. Gonna be 32 going into next year. Um, with the Pelicans as a whole, we know we know what dictates how their season is going to go. It's health. Can Zion be healthy is number one. Can B.I. be healthy is kind of a distant second because a lot of it is really relying on on Zion. But we know night in, night out, what you're going to get from C.J., you're going to get probably 18 to 22 points. Some nights they may go up to 30, 35. Still can do that. Um, not the best playmaker who kind of gets forced into that role a good bit, especially um, just with some of the injuries that they had there. Him and B.I. kind of took most of that playmaking load there um, in New Orleans, but capable enough to, to do a lot of the ball handling there. Um, still a great knockdown shooter, can create for himself off the dribble. Um, like he'll always be a very quality shooting guard no matter where he goes, if he spends more time in New Orleans or if he ends up on another team. Um, he'll always, always be a quality player just because, again, you know what you're going to get for him night in, night out. He doesn't have a lot of variance. He's not super streaky to an extent. Um, like, he's very consistently going to give you somewhere around 20 points, and that's who C.J. McCollum is. So I got him at the 10th spot. Yes, you're right. I also have him as a 10 spot. I just think that's the perfect spot for him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially these, this list of our projections, so this is going into the next season. It's like – you say he's going into what a thirteenth year. Um, he, he's like he's really he's not gonna. This is who he is basically. He's not gonna get any better. Right. But I don't think he's gonna drop off and get any worse. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But again, he's the third option on his team. So as a third option, I think he's great. Um, we yeah. seen in Portland when he was the second option, they just never felt like they had enough. But as a third option, I really really like him McCollum because like you said, he he's gonna give you consistent twenty points per game. Like you can always rely on him for that twenty points per game. So. He's solid. Um, I just feel like the guys I have ahead of him have a either are more established or just mm -hmm. better players flat out, or just even if they're not better than him right now, I can see them having a better season or just moving forward being better than him. So we, we definitely got the same number ten. Yep. So like I said, I, I think you described it perfectly. Everybody in front of him is either more established or 
has the potential to surpass him going mm-hmm. into next year just with the the youth. So moving into to my number nine spot, um, I have a guy who is I'm projecting to have a you know continue to develop and grow like he has in the NBA. Um, that's Desmond Bain. Um Mr. Minimum Wings fan on 2K himself. <laughs> but but last year put up, you know, over 21 points a night, five rebounds, four and a half assists, um, with a steal, which I would hope he could get a steal with the, the small arms. <laughs> uh, but but all jokes aside, um not only was he able to do it with Jaw on the floor, um, throughout the past two seasons, he stepped up his play during the times when Jaw has either been suspended or injured. Um, which I think is also, you know, shows his development, his growth a lot. Um, he can knock down the three ball with the best of them. has been, a, you know, over 40% from three, um, all three of his seasons in the league. And that's with continued growing volume now shooting, you know, seven threes a game last season. That's probably going to, you know, we might see a small uptick there, um, you know, going into next year. Um, and I think he'll continue to just be more aggressive on the offensive end because I saw in a lot of games last year, no, he he has the green light, it seems like, from Taylor Jenkins to take a lot of shots, tougher shots, off the dribble shots, um, and can let it fly some night. So I, I expect to see more consistent aggression from him on that front. Um, because if you couple that with look, some of these workout videos, you know it's the offseason, everybody workout videos look great. Right. But everybody Michael Jordan in the offseason. Right. I'm looking at Jaron Jackson working on crisp just fundamental post moves get into every single counter that I need to to get to the basket and put up a nice little floater a little hook lay up get to a dunk whatever it is so if he comes in and he's bumping his points per game up Ja gets off of the suspension and he's just he just be Ja Desmond Bain bumps himself up like this Grizzlies team was already like they've been a you know contending team in the west in terms of regular season they can put that together and make a playoff run. Desmond Bain is going to be a big part of that. Um, his production would, would be a large portion of that. So, so I have him at nine. Um, I expect him to, to continue to develop and be that number two for them in Memphis for, for a good amount of time coming between him and Ja. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, my nine and eight, honestly, it was tough. Like, I think, honestly, I think we probably have the same nine and eight. Mm-hmm. Just you know what I'm saying, in different orders. Because these two guys just seem like, even when you just look at their stat and just looked at their how, how they came into the league, both these guys started out, obviously, you know, they're rookies. They didn't have the best rookie years. Like, my number nine, sorry, I didn't even mention this guy's name. My number nine is Tyrese Maxey. Mm-hmm. Um, so him and Desmond Bain, I guess, spoiler alert, that's my number eight as well. Um, but it was tough ranking these two guys because they kind of had the same, like I said, they kind of had the same track record, record coming into the league, um, like Tyrese Maxey. Talked about this on the breakout episode. Started out eight points per game, then jump up to 17 points per game, then jump up to 20 points per game. And if we look at Desmond Bain, nine points per game, then jump up to 18 points a game, then 21 points per game. So um, I gave Desmond Bain the nod just because we talked about it. Josh suspension. I feel like Desmond Bain would just have more room to mm-hmm. develop even even more and just have more opportunity this upcoming season. Um, that could completely change if James Harden ends up getting right. traded and then Tyrese Maxey becomes the number two over there. Then I probably would t- put Tyrese Maxey even higher on my list than nine. So, um, But as of right now, James Harden is on the 76ers, so I'm just going to go off of that. And I think Tyrese Maxey, he's in for a big year, though. Regardless whether James is there or not, he's in for a big year. It's not going to be the same, obviously, whether well, obviously if James is there because you know James is going to get his shots here and there. But regardless, just off of the fact that He's shown improvement every single year. His scoring has gone up every single year. You've seen he had some big games this past playoffs, so it's not like he's scared of the moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's just getting his feet wet in the playoffs. So I think Tyrese Maxey is, is due for a big year, and I can see us doing this list a year from now and him being way higher than number nine. So, um, yeah, Tyrese Maxey is my number nine, but it was definitely real, real close between him and Desmond Bain. Yeah, I, I have Tyrese Maxey at eight. Um, again, I'm projecting, like, I really don't think Harden is going to be there. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. It just seems that whole situation is weird. And the reports have been coming out now that him and Daryl Morey's relationship is like off now, which is, I mean, they've been buddy, buddy since Houston. They tried to 
all the roster reconstructions they did, they bring him into Philly. Obviously, when Daryl gets the job there, they bring in a bunch of his Houston buddies. They got Daniel House and P.J. Tucker on the team. And it's like it just didn't work. And now he took the pay cut. They didn't get even a conference finals to show for it. So it's like well, he scratched they back. They don't want to scratch his. So I could see – it just feels like it's due time. That, mm-hmm. that he's going to be traded. So I think Tyrese Maxey is going to have a, a big season. He's going to just have to step into that number two role um, for this, this Sixers team. And I think what we've seen from him, like you mentioned, he stepped up to the plate and had a lot of big games for them last year. Um, and then even in the playoffs, like he's given you 20 a night, um, you know, in the playoffs as the, the third option, you know, right. on this team. So you expand that role a little bit. Like, I think very easily he's a guy that could put up 27, 28 points a night, like comfortably. And the way that he plays the game, um, like he – it feels like since Harden has been there and he kind of is able to play off of him at times, he just feels he can be out of the offense – but when he's in the offense and he's really locked in and they're like the ball most ball movement, everything is good. Um, and he can get it going. He gets hot really, really quick. Um, he can hit a couple of big shots and swing the momentum of the game. Um, I think he's capable as a ball handler, could do all the same things in the pick and roll. Obviously not to the extent of James Harden, who might be one of the best pick and roll players ever, but is capable enough in terms of his self shot creation um, can obviously is going to have to, develop in terms of being a playmaker in that aspect but that'll come with time like he's what still 22 i don't even think yeah, he's 23 he's yet young. Yeah, not even 23 young. yet so that'll still come with time um but the scoring is already there the self-creation is already there um and that's only going to continue to grow whether Harden is there or not but especially if Harden does leave and that you know shot diet opens up even more for him um and just, he's just a fun player to watch, bro. Like, he's a mm-hmm. bucket getter. Um, and, like, he's just a fun player to watch. So, I, I'm expecting a big year from him. Um, and like you said, I think in a year's time, if we make this list and, and Harden isn't in, in Philly, like, it's like there could be some arguments for him to push up into, like, top five range. Like, I think he has for real potential to be one of the best shooting guards um, in the NBA if given the opportunity. 100%. I'm, I'm – I'm very interested to see what a team would look like with him uh, being the number two on there. Um, mm-hmm. My only worry is that, like, I just hope that it would be enough and Joel can see the improvement to where, like, you know, he doesn't really ask out and say, oh, wait, yeah. I don't have enough help, blah, 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 blah. Like, but if, if he's patient enough with Tyrese Maxey, I definitely think he could develop into a quality, quality number two in this league, for mm-hmm. sure. So that was uh, that was your eight, right? Yeah. Okay. What is, what's your number seven? My number seven is Bradley Beal. Okay. Um, and we all know, right, going to, to Phoenix now, going to be the third option there. Um, was really the second option in Washington this past year, or really since Porzingis has been there. Um, and for better or for worse, obviously that dips his points per game down, like was putting up 30 a night on these, you know, these Wizards teams that, weren't super good you know he's got the green light he's the guy they bring in Chris Stops um, he's put up 23 per game the last two seasons but what really really struck me this past year the efficiency was really good 50 percent from the field 36 percent from three um, and so seeing him be able to play off another guy get his shots um, you know scoring efficiently not having to be like a really big volume guy to get to that 20, 25 points a night. Um, And look, right. You put anybody with his level of talent with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, it's going to be nightmares for teams to defend. Um, So realistically, like, could I have him higher on this list for his talent? Cause Bradley Beal is one of the best bucket getters in the league. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's hard to put a third option you know, any right. higher than this because everybody that I have in front of him is at minimum a second option, if not the first option, um, and can provide a lot more on the other side of the ball than Bradley Beal is. But by the end of the day, right, he's going to put up probably 20, 
two-ish points a night, decent efficiency. On any given night, any three of those guys could take over a game scoring if need be. So um, we don't even got to talk too much about Phoenix because we already know what it's going to be for them. Um, but but that's why I have Bradley Bill at seven. Just They're going to be a tough cover night in, night out just because of the talent around him. Yeah. We, we, so far, we pretty much got the same list. But I also <laughs> got Bradley Bill number seven. Um, yeah, I, he's seven for me off of his talent alone, like you said. Like, because these past couple of years, I mean, I guess compared to what he was as far as like averaging 30 points per game, obviously the scoring went down a little bit playing that little, that second fiddle um, to Przingis. Mm-hmm. But like I said, he's seven off of his pure talent alone because going to play alongside KD and Book, it's like, He's going to do well, don't get me wrong, but his numbers aren't going to be, like, great otherworldly numbers because, right. obviously, Devin Booker and KD are the one and two over there, and they're both, like, scorers. And it seems like Bradley Bill's going to play more of a facilitating role, like, more of that point guard role because... Right he, he did do that better in the last two years that Porzingis has been there. I think last year he almost had seven assists a game. This past year I think he had five and a half assists per game. Mm. Uh, so I guess playmaking definitely jumped up since Porzingis has been there and even just like watching him play kind of how he can dictate the offense and shoulder a little bit more of like being that initiator mm-hmm. um, was good to see. Like all, everything I think that he did last year, again, it <laughs> it really wouldn't matter as much because, again, you're already playing with Book and KD, but just seeing how he was able to play off of Porzingis and kind of be a complimentary piece instead of the one that everybody is like orbiting him around and like playing off Mm -hmm. of was good to see knowing that he's going into a place where he has now two other guys to play off of yeah 100 i i expect him to have to be very efficient and get um just with the looks that he's going to be able to get like Mm -hmm. he's not going to get the other team's best defender he's not going to get the other team's second (laughs) second best defender right so it's like i I expect him to be very efficient i expect him when he does get his opportunities like like you said there's going to be games where he goes out there he has 30 he has 35 he has Mm -hmm. maybe 40 um and in a night that maybe kd misses devin bug misses is like he can easily slot into that second option role i like where both of them is the he go, yeah, i was about to say he can go and be that first option right. so I, I definitely am excited to watch the suns a little bit this year but i just i don't see a world where he can be any higher than seven on my list right now right yeah it, that's just the people in front of him again like if we're ranking off for all talent maybe but looking in everybody's situations going into next year like mm. your third option at the end of the day it's tough right. to put you put you any higher um so, yeah, at six, I have Zach Levine, um, which I feel like is the top of this tier. And going up from here is like a, we're about to take a step up after Zach. Right. Um, but, but Zach Levine, um, you know, obviously playing with the Bulls, who we've been we've been vocal on their roster construction a lot on the pod. Um, they're kind of in no man's land. They're staying in no man's land. Right. Um, Doubling down on it, you know, bringing back Fooch and DeRozan still being under contract. So they're really running that back. And I think just holding out for Alonzo at this point, which is just unfortunate. But, like, the reality of the situation is as constructed, this Bulls team isn't really a threat to anybody in the East, in my opinion. Zach Levine still can light it up with the best of them in the league from any any type of way like he's really expanded his game year over year from what he started out as in minnesota to what he became as the number one option for a little bit in chicago and then now bringing in demar demar mostly being the the number one option but again he's a guy who on any given night can get his off um and, and be that guy there in chicago um like i said 25 points per game um Three level score can get to the basket, finish any type of way, um, can shoot the ball very well. Um, you know, really good efficiency too. Um, with thirty eight percent from three last year, um, almost fifty percent from the field as a whole. So, um, their team construction is really like team construction and the talent. Because, like I said, I think the people in front of him like were taking a, a big step up. Like if these were tiers. Zach would kind of be the top of this tier. And mm-hmm. then, like, we're stepping into the next tier when we get into this top five. But, um, yeah, it's tough because I know up until 
they made the playoffs, was it last year, he had been the longest. He had been in the NBA the longest and hadn't been in a playoff series at all. Like he had been in the NBA for, was that like six seasons? One, two, three, yeah, I mean, four, Minnesota five, stunk. six, seven, eight years. Eight years in the league until he touched a playoff game. Minnesota stunk, bro. I remember that. Hey, them teams was trash. Uh, yeah. And so, like, it's tough that he's he's just been a guy that's been on bad teams. He gets to Chicago. The Lonzo injury does not help their situation at all, but they just – they put a team together that was great because that team needed a boost because they were not well um, and they weren't performing. But, again, like – they're still a borderline playing team now. So it's unfortunate. Um, and Zach Levine is a guy who I, I wish could see more playoff success because, again, he's another guy I really enjoy playing just because of his his play style, his ability to score from all levels of the court. And he's bouncy. He's a two-time dunk champ, right? Like, that's Bro, still when he's there. on, his game is so beautiful to watch. Like, I love mm-hmm. watching Zach Levine when he's on. Though His problem is consistency, too, though, because – It'll be a game where he'll go out and he'll have 35 points, light you up from three. He's, like, killing you. And then there'll be another game where he's out there and he shoots six for 17 or something. Like, just, I don't know, the consistency consistency has always kind of been his problem. But, again, our lists are pretty much similar up to this point. I also have Zach Levine, number six. But, like you said, clear tier break off right here because the guys ahead of him, again, are just flat out better. Or just gonna project to be better. Actually, actually, mm-hmm. no. I, actually, everyone ahead of him right now is just better. I, I, I think lied. they are. Yeah, yeah everyone. Are. I lied. Everyone is just better <laughs> ahead of him. Yeah. So, um, clear, just break off right here. And I, like again, I just don't see like him getting any better than what he is right now. Like this list is projection going into mm-hmm. next season and just further. And that's off. okay. Like, I won't make it clear. That's okay too. Well, yeah, it's no problem. If he was the number one option, he could give you 27, 28 points a night with a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists. Mm-hmm. Who's the eyes, flashy plays, but you know, can really be your number one guy. He's not a bad defender, not necessarily the greatest defender, but has the tools to, you know, make some stuff happen and make you work. Um, so like if this is the best version of Zach Levine, that is a okay. That's perfectly fine. One hundred percent. So yeah. No, it's just he's just not better than any of these guys listed ahead yeah. of him. So this is just where he falls. Yep. Um so, yeah, like I said, we're about to take that step up in the tier. It's about and this to get was, interesting now. This was probably the hardest one to rank this five through three. Um, but like I said, once I made this list and looked at it again, I'm very comfortable with how I rank these guys. And so at five, I have Kyrie Irving. Okay. okay. And, again, the people that I have in front of him are either just right now better or I'm projecting going into next season like they're taking that step to become better. Um, but look, at the end of the day, the way that they have their roster constructed there in Dallas, we knew what it was when it happened. Like, at least last year, they were dead set on just beating you with offense. They've tooled it around a little bit. They, they're looking to iron out the center problem. They brought in Grant Williams, so they're addressing the wing depth and the defense. So, like, they're they're making strides in the right direction. I'm very interested to see how they kind of start the season off because Luka looks like he's in great shape. All the stuff that's been coming out with him, and he's, you know, mm-hmm. with the, the FIBA team for Slovenia, like, he looks like he is in great shape. And it's also crazy. I didn't even, like, I mean, I realized this, but I, didn't, I don't think I ever saw it. Like, Luca has been in the league for five years. He has four All-NBAs in five seasons. Luca is, like, otherworldly insane that's at basketball. That's kind of a – that's <laughs> a, like, wild start. Like, in terms of just being so – bro, put up 21 and, and – 21, 8, and 6 as a rookie. But that's why – that's, like, we talked about, like, why does Luca get – like get babied a little bit why is he on this pedal because on this pedestal like he's that good he, though yeah. like he's genuinely <laughs> that good like he that's why it pisses me off when he comes into into uh into camp or into this into the start of the season fat like it pisses me off because it's like bro if you just come in shape you can win mvp like you can lead your team we've already led his team to like western conference finals like you're one of the best players in the league like just come into the league 
in shape or into the season in shape. I mean, obviously they have a better roster around them now, so I'm excited to see what they do this season. But it's like, but when he's playing at his best, bro, he's one of the best players in the league easily. Right. Like he comes into the into the season out of shape and is still putting up thirty ten and ten. He can put up thirty ten and ten every single mm-hmm. night. So this is this is what I'll say to that too, because as good as we're talking about Luca right now and how heliocentric the offense is around him, in the what is it twenty games that Kyrie played in the regular season with Dallas, Luca is putting up thirty two a night. Your number two option is giving you twenty seven. Like yeah. that is, like I said, we stepped into that next tier. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kyrie, I think, like. I, I'm cool. I'm I'm cool really with him anywhere on this list from five to four, three. I could maybe even hear arguments for two almost, maybe. Yeah. But really five through three. Um, because like I said, look, we know what Kyrie is. Um the and I don't think it should be a, it's at least not a question for me, the best handles of all time. I was I, again, I've been doing my YouTube deep dives in the offseason. It's like I end up on a Kyrie Irving mixtape, and it's like you've the one against Milwaukee where he got like double teamed, and he kind of just put it through his yep. legs and then spun through both of them. Every time I see that play, my jaw drops. Like, how? How were you able to? That looks like some out of two K. It looks fake. Are you? I would have went through the replay and seen if the ball went through somebody's body or something. Like, there's no way that you just split that like that. So, like, supreme bucket getter. Clutch shot maker, like we've seen it on the highest, highest stage. Not like one of the biggest shots in NBA history there in that game seven of the, the 2016 finals. Like Kyrie is one of the most skilled offensive players ever. Um, the only knock you really can have on him is that he has not gotten any real team success as a number one option. Mm-hmm. And has only been able to go far into the playoffs as a number two. He tried it in in Boston, and it. Just I mean, even then too, it was, it was really only when he was with LeBron too. Because even when he was with, like, he hasn't really had much success outside of Cleveland. Like, he hasn't yeah. really done anything really. Whether it's been coming up short a little bit as a number one, or you know his off the court stuff, or his injuries too. Like Kyrie yeah. has seems like he's been hurt. Every single year, Pat, like post Cleveland, even during with Cleveland, like he's he was dealing with some injuries. So I, he's going into season fourteen. He's yeah, he's been. I mean, it's years. some tread on the tires at this point. You That's know? true. It definitely is true. But um, um, yeah, he's just it's just been tough. Po- that post Cleveland, post that LeBron with Cleveland, uh, it, it's been tough for Kyrie a little bit. But mm-hmm. as a number two alongside Luca, um, now have at least some solid defenders around them. A real a real solid roster around them, not what they had last year. Yep. It, it, let's see, we talked about it. it can get real scary mm-hmm. really, really fast. It can get really scary down there in Luke, Dallas. Let Luca come in healthy. This is MVP season, bro. Listen, I call, I try to call it like for the past two years, Luca's been making me look stupid because he comes into the league or comes to the season fat. I need you to come in shape, bro. Please <laughs> prove me right, bro. Just please do me this solid. But yeah, man. So that that's your number five is Kyrie Irving. Yep. Okay. My number five is actually Jalen Brown. Um, okay. It's been a lot of talk about Jalen Brown recently. You know, he got this bag. I see the video, bro. The internet is so is so messed up, bro. There's a video of the dude who only has a right hand, like that. Oh, oh my hand. god! And it's like, bro, Jalen Brown hooping after getting paid three hundred mil. That's sick. <laughs> I'm like, bro, why? What are we doing to this guy, bro? It is not that bad, bro. I get it. The left hand jokes are funny, but we have to be realistic here. Jalen Brown just came off of um, second team All NBA season. Put up, I don't even know how much he put up this season. What was it? Like 26. 26. He put up yeah, a lot. 26 points per game as a number two alongside Jason Tatum, who was averaging over 30 points a game. So it's like he is one of the best number two options in the league. And. He's a solid enough defender. His his, his defense kind of slipped off a little bit, but I do feel like when you take on more of that offensive scoring load, your mm-hmm. defense, unless you're just one of those supreme athletes, top of the league type guys, your defense sometimes tend to tail off a little bit, but he's still a well above average defender, giving you 27 points per game, 
like he shows up in the playoffs. I understand his last postseason, his last series wasn't too great. But again, we have to remember what he did in the season prior when he went to the finals. Jason Tatum was playing like garbage and Jalen Brown was out there hooping like Jalen Brown was out there doing his thing. And that's when a lot of you guys out there was saying that Jalen Brown was better than Tatum. Don't listen. Mm-hmm. It'd be those same guys that's saying, why are you paying Jalen Brown? Why are you paying a guy that has no left? Why are you paying a guy who's the second best player in the team? Just a while ago, he was to y'all, he was the first, he was the best player in the team. So it's like the switch up is kind of crazy on Jalen Brown, bro. So I, right now I feel like he's getting a little bit underrated because people are making it seem like this guy is just, is just a bum. Like he, yeah. he's one of the best players in the league. One, I say a top 20 to 25 ish player in the NBA. And when he's at his best, you know, he, he plays like he plays like one of those top guys. And every now and then he can take over games and be that number one on on any given night. So I I definitely think he's he's number five for me for sure. Yeah. Um, at number four is where I have Jalen Brown. Um, and that's where I have Kyrie. So it's like it's flip flop. Yeah. So like like you said, all the same reasons that final series is telling like he stepped up to the plate. Like, we know Tatum had the injury, but at the end of the day, Tatum did not really come into that series and shoulder the load that he needed to for the Celtics to be able to win. But Tate Brown was giving you almost 24 points a night against the, the Golden State Warriors. Um, like, that's if your Robin is stepping up to the plate in the, um, you know, in the finals and the bat signal is out, mm-hmm. that man just ain't show up. Can't ask for much more for the people that think that he's overpaid, whatever. We already talked about it a lot last episode covering the extension. It's not even going to be the biggest contract in NBA history for much longer. That's how the salary cap works. And what was the alternative for Boston? You going to let him walk? Like, like, what was the alternative, bro? They've Sorry. literally gotten as close as you possibly could. Well, I guess not possibly because they could have won a third game. But, like, <laughs> you, you can't get much closer to – winning a championship and just continued success in the postseason in terms of they've made the finals once now, you know, they've, they're always competitive all the way into the Eastern conference finals. They probably should have made the Eastern conference finals this past year or made the finals this past year, um, being the heat in the Eastern conference finals. Um, And so like, you don't break that duo up. Like that just does not make, does not make sense. But like you said, I think the defense is has gotten a little bit overrated. Like, still is a two way player, still is a good defender. I'm not gonna go as far as to be like he's like not. It's not an all defensive team. Yeah, he's not elite. In my eyes, right? Because like, if I, when I think of like the best perimeter wing defenders in the league, I'm thinking of like Herb Jones, Jalen McDaniel's, um, you know, like guys like that who Big are Bando. really <laughs> guys who are really like stepping up on the defensive side of the ball, taking on the best um, offensive player on the other team. It's like that is what they're able to do and really can suffocate people at times. And Jalen Brown, again, still is a very good defender, but it's like it's going to be very, very hard for you to be one of the best offensive players in the league and one of the best defensive players in the league at the same time. Mm -hmm. That to me is what makes what Kawhi was able to do when he was like healthy peak of his powers, Kawhi, so insane. It's like he was literally locking up your favorite player and then giving him 40 on the other end. That's why I value the defense so much on like, not to get too off topic, but like on like my top 10 of all time, like lists and stuff like that. Like those guys that are the number one options and are elite defenders like a Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, those t- LeBron in his prime, those type of guys, bro. I love that stuff, bro, because it's like, that's not easy at all. That's not easy. And that's also why I have one of these guys that we're going to talk about as high as I do on this list that we'll get into. I later. know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about, too. Yeah, because, like, uh, man, like, that's – I, I love I love the, the two-way elite on both ends. Like, I, I love that. And I'll be real with you. I'm going to just jump into it because I know you're talking about Anthony Edwards. Okay. Um, and that's who I have at three. And that was really the, the distinguishing factor between him – And Jalen Brown, to me, again, we're looking at a little bit projection. Like, I don't know if Cat's going to beat her or not. Either way, it's Ant Show Mm -hmm. (laughs) in Minnesota. Um, 
Yeah, I know you talked about it a lot in the the Blake the, the breakout player episode that we did um, in terms of like what his ceiling could be as a guy who could potentially become an MVP candidate. Putting up 25 in your third season at the age of 21, Man. special, special. He's and he's like again, he's a guy. He's got the handle. He's got the self creation at all three levels. Tough shot making ability, finishing ability. If you care about the highlights, he's got that too. I keep. I just recently resaw the dunk he had on. Um, who was it? Uh, Yuta Watanabe when he yeah. was Whoa. from like two years ago when it was yes. like the pandemic and they had the tarps on the seats. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Nasty. His head is above the rim, like nasty. And he like we are just scratching the surface like bro is not he's hasn't even had his age 22 he hasn't even turned 22 yet he's like, nowhere close to his prize what i'm bro i'm telling you he's going to be nice bro he's right. going to be at the top like one of those best players in the league bro he right. hasn't even scratched his prime but at all like what you were alluding to like his ability to now i think becoming the number one option there in minnesota he put up 25 last season. What I don't know what that's going to be this year. Like that could legitimately it could be 30. It could, bro. <laughs> it could be 30 at night. Thanks. <laughs> What's uh Bruce Brown was he he went on his little podcast run. He said Minnesota was the toughest series for them. Mm-hmm. And who was the only per, who was the only person I was really fighting in it making was just it tough? Ant. It was Ant. just cuz of Ant. Stole a game. Shifted the board on the on the wing to get that game. He is prime to like become this for real, for real thirty point per game scorer. But like you said, he's got the mentality. You can see it. He's doing all this on the offensive end, and then he want to pick up your best player on mm-hmm. defense side of the ball. He want to get scrappy. He wants to defend. He doesn't want to take plays off on that side of the ball. That mentality, if he ups that points per game and it starts getting into that you know for real for real like elite wing defender conversation like we just were talking about Kawhi I'm not saying that this is a one-to-one comparison so do not blow this out of proportion Mm -hmm. I'm just saying when you pair somebody that is that elite offensively with like legitimate quality perimeter defense like I'm not just talking like they're not a negative like no they're a good defender you're like that is an absurd play. That's what teams want all these three and D players to become. They come into the league so raw. It's like they they can maybe kind of shoot. They need to still work on the shooting, but they're athletic. They can defend. If everything else kind of comes around, they would love them to become somebody like Jalen Brown. But Anthony Edwards, to me, is a better scorer. Mm-hmm. So it's like you add that type of defense. You add the mentality. He's going to be the number one option there with the ability to be your not, – he's not going to be the best defender in Minnesota, obviously playing with McDaniels and, I mean, Gobert too. But, like, all those things help. If he can get a little bit more aggressive there on the perimeter, like, bro, sky is the limit. The sky is the limit for Anthony Edwards. So, again, we're projecting going into next season, but I have him as a the number three shooting guard going into next year. It's, it's Ant-Man's time. Listen, man, you know I agree with you. And that's why my number three is Donovan Mitchell. Oh! That's why my okay. number three is Donovan Mitchell. So listen, I'll, before I even get in the end, I'll just talk about Donovan Mitchell. Because Donovan Mitchell actually is one of my favorite players. You know this. I've been mm-hmm. defending Donovan Mitchell since he came into the league. I was one of the people that said he should have won Rookie of the Year. And that Ben Simmons was a sophomore. <laughs> but we ain't going to get into that. <laughs> We're not going to get into that. Whatever. We see how that turned out. Matter of fact, I'm a, I ain't even going to get into that. I'm not yeah. going to do Ben Simmons <laughs> like that. I'm going to let him rock out. You look like you about to get worked up. <laughs> I mean, he stole my man's Rookie of the Year. That's all I'm going to say. He stole my man's Rookie of the Year. But, now, realistically, though, Donovan Mitchell, I, I've been a huge fan of Donovan Mitchell ever since he came into the league. Um, what he did with the Jazz, I feel like n- never, even when it was happening, ever got hyped up like as much as it should, as much as it should have. Like he was going toe to toe with Jamal Murray in the bubble, 
dropping 40 point games, another 40 point game. I think he had a 50 point game, matter of fact. The playoff rising out of him is just, it's on another level, bro. It's in series where he's averaging like 35, 36 points. And people, and, and it's like no one cares. It's like no one cares. Like, I get it, he lost, but it's like, bro, we, Luca does something like that, and it's like, oh my God, this guy's Michael Jordan. Like, oh my God, he's Jesus Christ. But it's like, bro, Donovan Mitchell was just, Killing was absolutely carrying the Jazz offensively because it's like no one on that team, for the most part, besides I think Mike Conley was on that team, could really create their own shot like that. Joe Ingles was solid, but I mean he wasn't no, he wasn't great. So it's like, I bro, I'm watching games where he's going against the Clippers, he's going against these good defenses with good perimeter defenders, and he is killing them, like destroying them. So it's like he doesn't get the credit he deserves when he he's in Utah. Then he goes to Cleveland. Finally, people started talking about him at least a little bit. It's like, oh my God, Donovan Mitchell broke out. It's like he's been doing this. What are you, like? What are y'all talking about? He's been doing this. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, Donovan Mitchell always, always has one, been one of my favorite players in the league, and I'm glad to see he's finally getting at least a little bit of recognition. I think he was was he fifth in MVP voting, fifth for six. He was up uh, there. He was fifth this year, I think, right? Because it was Jokic, and, or no, Embiid, Embiid, Jokic, Jokic Giannis, Giannis, and then Tatum. Tatum. And then Donovan Mitchell was fifth. Okay, yeah. Like, I'm not saying he needs to be winning MVP, but, like, at least he's getting a little bit of recognition. So, I think Donovan Mitchell is one of the best players in the league, one of the best shooting guards in the league, obviously. And I think that coming up this next season, um, obviously, he's still the one over there. He's still going to put up amazing numbers. But I do feel like Darius Garland's development a little bit. He could take away. He could take a little bit away from that. Him, Evan Mobley, if he develops a little bit more offensively. So, that's really the main reason that and the fact that i'm so high on my next guy obviously it's the reason why i have him third instead of second but if he's second on your list on anyone's list like obviously i'm not opposed to it it's, i have no problem with it so yeah donovan mitchell for me that's my number three shooting guard in the nba okay um I, as you were saying that i pulled up the statistics from that um from that series against you uh against denver in the bubble Two 50 pieces in a 40 piece. If, bro, if anyone else did that, name a player in the league. If anyone else did that, do you know how hyped up that would get? First game of the series, he came out in, in a loss, though, but dropped 57 points. Next closest player on his team, Joe Ingles, had 19. Bro. And, and it's like no one cared. It's like no one, like outside of people in Utah, it's like no one cared. I'm over here like, bro, Donovan Mitchell is really like that. Donovan Mitchell is really that guy. And it's like, I mean, I guess. Like, like no one cared. But you know why? Because it was in the bubble. So it's like no one really cared. Even when he did it again because he's in Utah, it's like nobody really cares, bro. And because he lost, no one really yeah. cares. It's like, bro, we have to win or lose. Bro, the guy is is playing his ass off, bro. Like he, mm-hmm. the numbers he's putting up is crazy. Like you gotta give him some type of respect. That that always got on my nerves. Yeah, thirty five a night after the bubble in that um that Clipper series that they lost, trying to get to the Western Conference Finals. Um, and then the last year in Utah, I think he put up was this twenty six a night in that series against Dallas that broke the Utah team apart. But yeah. I have Donovan Mitchell at two and. Part of why I ranked him here, to give the whole, like, background on it, thinking about that whole team construction in Utah, like, the way that their defense was predicated, the way everything was set up was, I mean, and why Rudy Gobert won the DPOIs that he did was everything was getting funneled into Rudy, who, love it or hate it, statistically is one of the best rim deterrence, rim protectors of all time. And it's like, we just funnel everything to him. He stops people from scoring in the paint. And we let Donovan Mitchell cook on offense. What that then turned into, obviously, like we saw his team start exploiting Rudy on the perimeter and just saying, we're not going to funnel stuff into you. You have to come out and guard somebody. And if you don't, we're just going to start knocking down threes. And if Mm -hmm. you do come out and guard us, kind of like a traffic cone, bro. We're going to go past you. Mm-hmm. Um, but too much of that blame, I feel like, gets gets thrown on to Rudy. Like, obviously, like, yes, that's a, a large deficiency. If a team can go five out and you just are, like, really incapable of playing any type of perimeter defense at all. 
But even when he's in the paint and things are running as normal, like as design, like we're funneling things into Rudy, like they were all turnstiles. Like every single one of their perimeter players in Utah and Donovan Mitchell was one of the biggest culprits of this. Like there was no perimeter defense being played. Like one move, they're getting to the basket. One move, they're getting to the basket. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter who it was. Royce like Royce O'Neal was the best defender that they had like during that run, at least really towards the end. It's like, he can't account for everything that's going on. So it's like everybody is getting whatever they want on that side of the ball, which is a little disheartening to see for a guy like Donovan Mitchell, who came out of Louisville as like a better defender, like scrappy, at least effort wise. Um, But like he played good defense in college. So like to see that kind of drop off during his time in Utah, or that's just like a reality of him having a shoulder so much load or not. That's that's what I was about to say. I think it's just because, again, we talked about it's like, bro, it's hard unless you're one of those top, top, top athletes. Right. It's hard to be the number one guy on offense and have especially the way they were playing. It was like he's also like he's a combo guard too so it's like he's setting people up at times as well so it's not like he's getting set up like he has the ball in his hands a lot so he's yeah. generating a lot of offense so it, it's really tough to have a guy do that and then also like okay be a solid defender or like mm-hmm. be an elite level defender that's tough uh, but i went on that mini tangent all to say that this last year in cleveland i was very very pleased to see that defensive intensity I felt came back for him. Mm-hmm. And again, like you kind of just talked about, a lot of that's probably due to, well, now he's got Darius Garland with him. Who, exactly. Like we talked about on last week's episode, like he can on any given night go out and give you 42. So it's like he has that like security blanket to know it's not just on him. Mm-hmm. So he can go and be a little bit more aggressive on the perimeter, like get into a defensive, you know, you know in that stance, like, come on. Like, Sit in the chair. We, we know what he can do on the defense side of the ball, and that definitely came out, like, statistically in terms of, like, raw counting stats, steals, or whatever. Like, it goes far beyond that. Like, watching them play just year over year, that, especially that last year in Utah, like, really that last series against Dallas where it was like, bro, everybody is blowing past all of the perimeter defenders on Utah. Like, seeing how bad that looked to how he was playing defense this past year in Cleveland – there is a major, major improvement there and just literally just the effort level um, on what he's providing on that side of the floor. So doing all of that on the defensive side, while still giving you 28 a night, you know, four rebounds, you know, four and a half assists, like one of the premier bucket getters in the league can literally score any, any way, any way he wants to score. Mm-hmm. Um, in addition to now having that added defensive effort. And like we already kind of talked about, one of the best playoff risers, like, and continues to be one of the better playoff risers. And hopefully, obviously, they had the the rough playoff run this past year, but most of the team being young, that's their first playoff experience. Like, everybody gets their feet under them. They get situated. Like, we'll see another big playoff run from Donovan Mitchell again, too. Um, so, off of that alone, like, what he's able to do in the playoffs as a number one option, um, that's why I have him over – Anthony Edwards in that little bit on that, the defensive side of the ball there. But bro, it's Donovan Mitchell. It's Spider. Like, he, he's him. He's him. He is. So that's why I listen. I'm not – I fully, fully get putting Donovan Mitchell at two. Um, my number two, obviously, Anthony Edwards. So my guy, you know what I mean? I just think if, I, if we're talking about top end potential – I truly, truly, truly believe, and we talked about it before, I think Anthony Edwards can be one of the best players in the league. Not position-wise, just players in general. He can be one of the best players in the NBA. And Don, I love Donovan Mitchell. Love Donovan Mitchell. I don't think he can be the best, like one of the best players in the league. I just don't think so. Um, do I think he can win a championship as a number one? I mean, possibly. Who knows? I think Donovan Mitchell, he's shown that. Like you said, playoff riser, like he can play to that number one level. So, I mean, that's a possibility. If Rudy Gobert was just, I don't know, if he spent 20,000 more VC, <laughs> put up that, that lateral, <laughs> lateral quickness, who knows, hey, bro? Switch Rudy Gobert with Anthony Davis. 
Come on, who that's knows? A, that's a chip. That's a chip. That's what I'm saying. So like, I I do think Donovan Mitchell can be a number one on championship level team. Um, but I mean, I don't know, man. I just maybe I'm just it, absurdly high on Ant, bro. But I just really got that feeling that like Ant is he's one of those guys, man. Like he we talked about it, just wants to go out there and be the elite offensive player and then also be the elite defensive player. Like you just said it, like Donovan Mitchell, when he had to be the only guy over there um, offensively, like that defense took a little bit of a, a step back. And obviously I'm not saying that Anthony Edwards is playing with the same caliber of defenders that Donovan Mitchell was because I feel like he's playing obviously with a lot, a way better defensive team than the Utah Jazz was. But mm -hmm. again, it's just he has more of the tools to be an elite level defender. He has the mindset to be an elite level defender, and then he has the mindset to go at you offensively and not be scared of the moment at all. Like yeah. we just said, he just took a game off of the the the, the champions. It who went like, on one of the most dominant runs we've ever seen. Who just rolled everybody, and the only person who took more games off is the guy we're about to talk about right. next. <laughs> and so it's like, and to me, it just makes sense, bro. To me, it just makes sense. Yeah. Like. Andy Edwards, like I said, I just genuinely think that he could be like one of the best players in the league. And to score, to average twenty five points per game in your what was the second, darn third season in the league, it's like, bro, he's only how old is he? He's, how old is Andy Edwards? I don't think he's twenty two yet, bro. You, we said you don't really hit your official prime, like peak of your powers till twenty seven. You telling me he has five years of possibly getting better? Yeah. He turns 22 in a week. So happy early birthday to Anthony Edwards. But yeah, yeah bro. It's like bro. five years until we see peak of his powers, Anthony Edwards. It's like Donovan Mitchell. He came in fifth in MVP voting. I don't think he'll have like, I hope so. I love Donovan Mitchell. I just don't think he'll have a season, an MVP level season. Mm -hmm. I think Ant is one of those guys where, like if you look at everyone in the league, just in general, who hasn't won an MVP yet and you say, who can you like guarantee like eventually he'll get one? I think Anthony Edwards is one of those guys that like he's gonna get one eventually. That's that's what I think. Unless like if somebody goes in a money on somebody, way. like I think that's a safer bet. That's what I'm saying. So I just think the ceiling is just insanely high. Again, if someone has Donovan Mitchell ahead of him, obviously I don't disagree with that. So yeah, Anthony Edwards, I think, is the second best shooting guard in the NBA. So you still think that's the right pick for for Minnesota, not not Lamelo? Oh yeah, for sure. I think so. I know that people had those those debates. Nah, you know, I just, when they were coming out. I listen. That's I like 2020, Lamelo. Twenty twenty draft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nah, I, that's. I mean, I, I like Lamelo, but he. I'm a. I don't know. I don't. Know, I just Lamelo. It's a tough situation because I feel like his organization is absolutely terrible. They um, got, they got. Look, everybody want to throw out other non basketball related stuff into the goat conversation, bro. We can talk about Michael Jordan as a, a owner and a GM. Low key, lo if, listen. If you're gonna bring up his shoes, why not bring up the ownership? If we're gonna talk about off the court stuff. We're gonna talk about all that extracurricular activities. Let's bring out. <laughs> let's talk about them all. So that's why. I, that's the reason why I don't like that. I don't like bringing up his shoes and his aura. Like what they gotta do with him playing ball? <laughs> Better aura. Like what they That's gotta crazy. do with him playing ball, bro? Yeah. Like, I don't got nothing to do with it. But yeah, now Anthony Edwards for sure was the the right pick over Lamelo. Yeah. Um, Wiseman yeah. wasn't though. Wiseman wasn't. <laughs> Wiseman was not. Yikes. <laughs> um, you already alluded to it. Um, the number one guy on both of our lists, the only person that took more than one game. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the the Denver Nuggets is Devin Booker, and I just was thinking about this like I, I, it doesn't really get much simpler than this. This man had Kevin Durant join his team and made Kevin Durant the second option. That, I listen. That's I was gonna ask you because I knew we both had Devin Booker one. What is the argument against Devin Booker being Kevin, being better than Kevin Durant right now? Like. Like just I, if I was ranking players, like is D book better than KD? I'm listen. I'm not, and I'm not saying that he is. I'm just genuinely just bringing up the question. It's like the last couple times we've seen Kevin Durant, he got boxed by Boston, had a very inefficient series, was just mm -hmm. I, had a flat out just bad series. You know what I mean? Then he goes to Phoenix, and it's like 
Devin Booker is out here lighting the world on fire. And Kevin Durant has had some good games, but it wasn't efficient. It just wasn't efficient. It's not it what we expected from it, him. Yeah, like he didn't – I wouldn't say he had a great series. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the numbers – the numbers ended up being good, but I feel like he took so many shots. It's like, eventually, yeah, some of them is going to fall. So it's like, I mean, I guess you can say the defense kind of focused more on KD cause, just because he's Kevin Durant. But it's like, bro, Devin Booker seems like the one over there. That's just from what I'm seeing. That is what my eyes are telling me. Devin Booker seems like the number one in Phoenix. Look, this is – some of it has to just do with KD as a player. Like, KD might – really be one of the most plug and play type of players we've ever seen. Like what, what team could you not put Kevin Durant on? You have to be like, I don't know if he would fit or like, well, with this guy or this line, none of them, he can do everything on the offensive side of the ball. You would want, like he fits into any type of system. So I think that might play a little bit of a role into it. But like, when you think about, he just was the number one option on a team that had Kyrie Irving and James Harden on it. And then he went to Phoenix, and when the chips are on the table in the playoffs, this man, Devin Booker, went 20 for 25 from the field, put up 47 points and nine assists. Like, bro, and then followed that up the next game on a night where Jokic is doing everything he can to try to get one in Phoenix, have 53. Um, Devin Booker in that game, they, they, him and KD both put up 36 points. But he went, in this game, he shot 78% from the field, 75% from three. And in the game that he put up 47 points, he shot, let me pull this up, he shot, 80% from the field and 62% from three. Those Gener- are not real those are not real stat lines, bro. That's too generational heater. Like generational hot streak. Like that, that, it just didn't make sense. And watching it too, it's like he takes tough shot. Like he's a tough shot maker. So it's not like he's hitting just open looks. He is shooting contested middies fall away middies he's hitting contested threes he's hit everything everything he's throwing the whole bag mm-hmm. at you and he's knocking all these shots down it's like bro it was insane to watch and kd is just like bro go like right you got it go like he's deferring to this guy mm-hmm. you seen what bradley bill said when he on his introductory press conference this is like this is book nation mm-hmm He's been in Phoenix this whole time. He stayed 10 toes down throughout all the bad, throughout him putting up 70 in the Boston Garden when his team was losing and the Celtics players are clowning him because they're losing on the scoreboard. But he is like, they can't guard him. This is like baby Devin Booker. He's like 19, dropping 70 in an NBA game. Yeah. Um, And so, like I said, to see that he was able to, or that they were able to bring in KD. And just like he just like went even harder, <laughs> yeah. like that yeah. <laughs> is so telling of his ability as a scorer. And I want to ask you, do you think he's the closest thing we have right now offensively to Kobe? The closest thing, I'd say so. Yeah, if you're okay. talking about just his game wise, like how he's scoring, right. I say yeah because majority of his points come from the mid range. Um, he works out of the post a little bit. Obviously, it's not going to be his forward isn't going to be as like refined and great as Kobe. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'd say so. He's like a modern day version because he takes obviously he's going to take a little bit more threes just because of the way the NBA play is played mm-hmm. now. But I feel like if Kobe played now, he kind of would play like that as well. Like he just it just be normal to take a little bit more threes than he did back when he played. So his game, I think it it. It resembles Kobe the most out of everyone, strictly just on the offensive end. So, yeah, I'd say him. I say he's up there. The other person you automatically think of is Tatum, but I think Tatum takes yeah. a lot of threes. I don't think his Devin Booker's game is. He loved that side step. He loved that side step three, bro. He loves to step to the left. He's gonna pull it, but mm-hmm. now nah, Devin Booker's game more so resembles Kobe than I'd say a, a guy like Tatum. Yeah, I. Uh... That, like, logically, if you want to go through how you rank players, like, that should solidify enough why he is just the number one player 
um, or number one shooting guard in the league, like from being able to say Kevin Durant, yo, you can take a back seat tonight. Is there's not many players that have probably ever played the game of basketball that can do something like that. I, I'm just like, I mean, just being honest, it's just like, bro, if Kevin Durant, like, if his name wasn't Kevin Durant, like, and you just go based off of re like recent, like the past couple of years, it's like. I just feel like people would say that Devin Booker is clearly the number one over there. But the fact that it is Kevin Durant, you're always obviously you're always gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. And rightfully mm -hmm. so. Like you're always gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. It's gonna be tough to get to that point. It's even mm -hmm. hard to be like one two, because you really wanna be like one A, one B type of situation. Exactly. But it's like I think that is what I'm gonna be most that's what I'm gonna be closely watching this upcoming season, like Listen, when the game is on the line and when it really comes down to it, like, whose team is this really? Like, I, I think just off personality alone, I think Devin Booker is going to take it. But I'm curious to see if Kevin Durant just kind of, like, defers to him or is like, no. Like, what's his, his famous line? I'm Kevin Durant. Like, if he actually says, no, I'm the best player on this team. I know this is technically your team, but it's like when push comes to shove, I'm the best player on this team. So I'm going to be watching that real, real closely this upcoming season. Yeah, I think – to answer your question earlier, trying to think about putting Devin Booker ahead of KD is like, it's a wild thought in my head. But it's like you said, it's a lot about thinking about Kevin Durant as a player in totality is like, how can I put Devin Booker ahead of that? But if I'm thinking like right, right now, I can see the argument. I I, I can see the argument. I don't know if I can, I can buy into it, but... I can see it, and look, the, the playoff series against Denver, even against the, the Clippers too, like both of those series showed a lot about Devin Booker and where his game is at right now. Um, and put it this way too, it's like, would it even really be a bad thing? It's like, bro, we just talked about it all the time. Dev, how old is Devin Booker? He's 27. That's your That's reaching That's crazy. That. You're, bro, these NBA players are coming in way too young. All right. You see, bro, it's crazy. But it's like, if that's your prime, that means he's there. Kevin Durant is what? About to be like 34, 35. Yeah. It's like, they're going in different directions. I mean, I'm not going to say he's going to fall off, but it would just no, make I, sense. Yeah. It's yeah. not crazy. Like, it sounds crazy, but when you stop, when people stop looking at it from a standpoint of like, these athletes are just going to be at their peaks forever. It could, it could, it could make more sense as to how that would become more of a thing. Kevin or Kevin Durant being not as good as Devin Booker right now. Not saying it is, but just you know, it could be a possibility this upcoming season. Yeah, that's a. I, I'm gonna think on that some more. But like that is, he's different, bro. He's different. Watching those Nuggets games was like. That does not make any sense at all. Bro is putting up a micro stat line in the second round of the Western Conference playoffs. Bro, I can only be I can only imagine being a Nuggets fan watching that. Like, bro, you know what's going in. Like, it doesn't matter if he has two people in his face. Like, you know it's gonna go in. Like, no matter what. Like, it had to be the same type of experience of watching, like, what happened against the Nuggets too with, with Damian Lillard. Oh yeah, going crazy! <laughs> and it, was, yeah. it went into what double or triple overtime mm -hmm. uh, before they won. But he got he got Austin Rivers. Like, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, so he just missed one three, but he really was not missing. And you know it's your night because I, I was another one I probably told you I go on YouTube rabbit holes. You find all the old clips. Right. It was like he made one in overtime that was like. Dummy contested mad far. He banked it in. It's the like turnaround. Was that the turnaround one or that was something else? I don't remember what it was. It was either the turnaround or it was like, I think it might have been late on the clock. So he kind of just like chucked up something crazy and it banked in. Yeah. And he just is like, but what are you supposed to do? He's literally like, he's on fire. Like, it's yeah. like, crazy. I wonder who's um, like, who's like the scariest player in the league when they're like at, like when they're at their hottest, like who's the scariest player in the league? Steph, like, yeah, like it, 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 yeah, <laughs> he's definitely out there. But it's like it's just crazy to think about. Like some of these guys, they go on tears because like Damian Lillard, obviously he's not as good of a shooter as Steph. But like when he gets on that level, bro, it is that, get out of the, the off way. The dribble is crazy, bro. The off the dribble is insane. Yeah, 
That's wild, bro. Yeah, I uh, he book is he book is him, bro. That is crazy. I like, I'm literally just staring at these stats and get belief on this playoff. <laughs> like that is insane. Yeah, small fours is gonna be another fun one to go through and rank. Um, that's gonna be one where we're really gonna have to like. Here's the player bank because like yeah. <laughs> this is like I almost want to combine small forward and power forward and just be like top twenty because it's like all these players are so interchangeable. Literally, bro. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I like going through these. It's just really making me think about who I think could really take that leap mm-hmm. you know, this next season because or that leap or that fall off because I notice on neither of our lists. Clay Thompson, <laughs> not yeah. the cut. Uh, I watched the deep threes episode. I don't know if he. I don't think he made the cut for two out of the three of them. I think Isaac was the only one that had him as a top ten shooting guard still, and he was like nine. Listen, man. Listen, I know the Warriors fans not gonna like it, but if we're going off of projection, it's like they don't even gotta be off projections. I look at last season, like it. It's not. A knock on him as a player, it is just tough to come back from both of those injuries and be remotely close to the same player you were. And so much of what made Clay Thompson great, obviously, like the shooting, but he also was a legitimate two way guy. Mm-hmm. And like that two way is now a one way street. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's tough, bro. It's tough. I'm doing a list and I just see his name and I'm like, like, I, I got like, nowhere for him to slot in. I was like, and I'm doing it. I'm like, he got to be eight, right? Nah, he got to be nine. Right? It's no way he fall out of ten. It's no way he fall out of ten. It is what it is, man. Yep. It is what it is. Sad to see. That's tough, yeah. I, I I hope that it could come back a little bit, but, like, bro, the ACL and the Achilles back-to-back, it's just so tough. At this point, like, I just – when he gets the shoeing, you know, going and he gets hot, like that's always gonna be like a joy to watch. Just watching him play again and then even in that that first game back, he dumped on like Jared Allen or somebody. They playing the Cavs. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, he still he still got it. He still got it. So that in and of itself is like good for Clay, but he, he just can't make the can't cut the, the top ten. Um before we get into the next topic, which is this D Wade versus James Harden debate, which has been all over Twitter, thanks to Jeff T. Um, Got to give a quick shout out to the sponsor, Seat Geek. You know what it is, Seat Geek, the ticketing app that makes ticketing takes all the confusion out of out of buying tickets. You go on the app, you go into a concert, basketball game, football game, soccer game, play, comedy show, doesn't matter what it is, they have it on the app. And you can look through your tickets. Everything is color-coded and scored from a score to 0 to 10. If you see a ticket with a score of 2, it's probably going to be in the red. It's probably not a good deal. You should stay away from it. But if you see something in an 8 or maybe even a 9, it's going to be bright green. You know you're getting good bang for your buck. You're getting value for your money. Um, so tell them about the promo code, Dane. Listen, man, if you use promo code off the glass, you will get $20 off of your first Seat Geek order. That is code off the glass you'll see on the screen right there come on use the code man you listen these tickets be expensive bro i'm not gonna mm-hmm. lie to you bro twenty dollars off that's twenty dollars for food that's twenty dollars right for, you know what i'm saying that's twenty dollars for gas you might know, be parking bro. for the venue you never that's know what i'm so. saying listen use go off the glass All right twenty dollars off your first order exactly all one word look bro inflation is crazy save yourself a little change you know what um, i'm saying because i've seen the ticket prices for beyonce's tour people dropping 2100 I see somebody pay five thousand dollars. So I ain't yeah. saying spend that much, but look, if you could spend five thousand or forty nine eighty, save yourself <laughs> right. You need, listen. save yourself twenty. <laughs> right. Um but yeah, we, we want let's get into this D Wade versus Harden stuff because I, I think we both gonna be on the same same side here. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um so this all started with, with Jeff Teague on his podcast. Who shout out to him, bro is one of the best storytellers. Hilarious, um, hilarious. It's, literally, is hilarious. It's comedy, pure comedy. Every time he tells stories, um, but he said this is Jeff Teague saying that he thinks that James Harden is a better shooting guard, better player 
than Dwayne Wade. And the uh. only, only, only argument that I really feel like you can make is if we're talking like peak for peak, I don't even like saying it, peak for peak, like we're talking that 20, it was like 17, 18 Houston run where it's like this dude, he had that stretch where he was averaging like, was like 38 points a night for like yeah. two months or something like that. Um, like that James Harden where he had Ricky Rubio guarding him from behind because he was afraid of the step back. Like that James Harden, that's a different animal. But if we're looking at their whole careers, like, bro, like we got to be honest, bro. This man, D-Wade is a three-time champ. You can't make the argument that he got carried by LeBron because he did it before LeBron mm-hmm. and, and backpacked that Heat team. Crazy. Now, now I got to pull up the stats. Because <laughs> I was looking at it the other day um, when all this was going down in the first place. Um, it was that, so five, right, against the, the oh, Mavericks? Six. Oh, six. Well, oh, five, oh, six, I think. Put up 35. Let me pull this up. Put up 35, 8, and 4. Bro. Harding can come never. Come on, bro. <laughs> come on, bro. Harding can never, bro. Let's just let's just be real here. Like, let's like listen. Even if you want to say peak for peak, I get it. Harden's regular season numbers. Insane. Ridiculous regular season numbers. No one's ever gonna take that away from him. Best one of the best regular season keyword scores in nba history mm-hmm. i don't care what you do in the regular season if you cannot replicate it in the playoffs I, replicate not even the right word bro i can't i can't even get something close i, I can't get similar like, i, I bro what he did this past year that is not acceptable bro no it's not like i don't need okay you can have a good game here and there you're still a good player like you're gonna have good games here and there but when i need you most when i need you to be at your best when i need you to fully right. come through for me when the bat signal is out is batman gonna show up or not and i and constantly time and time again james harden just has not and it's not a theory it's not like it's no it's it's facts at this way it's just it's facts he has not shown up in the biggest moments he's had opportunities that series against the spurs played like absolutely garbage down the stretch absolutely terrible it was serious against the warriors i understand chris paul got hurt i like no one's blaming you for losing That's to the, the best team ever only saving grace to all of that is like you did have the unfortunate time of playing and trying to win the West when you're going up against the KD, Steph, and Draymond and Clay Warriors. But it's like you had an opportunity, and you didn't show up yourself. You missed a lot of those threes that, as well. Like that, that old yourself, team ain't show up. Yeah. They didn't. I'm not gonna lie. But it's like if you are the best player, if you, I, if he went out there and he did his thing, like he had a good game, and they still lost. No one's like, I'm not going to kill you for that. Like, it is what it is. Your team didn't show up. But it's like, you have been the reason your teams lose some of these games. And mm-hmm. like, you haven't done anything to show me like, okay, they lost. But Harden really like left it all on the floor out there. Like, no, it was, most of the time it's they lost because Harden didn't show up. It's like, I don't, bro, you could score, you could average 45 points in a regular season. If you come into the playoffs and average 20, I don't care. I don't, I, I don't care what you did in the regular season. It's like when you compare him to a guy like D. Wade, who, like you said, backpacked a team by himself and won a championship before LeBron. It's like, mm-hmm. bro, they don't, to me, they don't, they just don't compare. And the, that's not even mentioning, we're only talking about offensively. D. Wade is a insanely better defender than James Harden. Like, it's not even close. Right. It's, yeah. it's not even on the, James like. James Harden doesn't put, like, almost no effort. On the defensive side of the ball for a, like a large portion of his career, it's like a non-existent part of basketball to him. And it's He's like only playing on the offensive side. And these arguments are so dumb to me because it's like they never have context. Because when you like, I've seen I've seen a lot of these debates on Twitter. It's like okay, but D Wade had Shaq and LeBron and Bosh. It's like, did you actually watch Shaq? Do you do you think Shaq was 
2001 Shaq back like when right. he was with D Wade? I, I can tell you what Shaq put up in those finals. Cause like I just said, what, what I said, D Wade was putting up 37, 38 on that that team. If I go to the finals for Shaq, take a wild guess at his points per game in that series. I'm not saying that this Shaq was the washed Shaq. No, he but wasn't. This, but he was not the same Shaq that you had just seen in Los Angeles a few years prior. We are now, was this, this is three years removed from the three-peat. And he's already been in the league for a, like almost a decade at this point, mm-hmm. playing the most, like at the time where he's the one of the most dominating, physically imposing players. It's like it takes toll on your body. D-Way's put up 38 a night. He had Shaq. Shaq gave you 13.7 points per game <laughs> that series. It's like, bro. What are we talking about? You're, just you're going looking at off, a name. You're just going off of name value. You have to actually, or if you haven't watched it, don't speak on it. If you haven't even looked, you didn't even need to watch some it. Some of y'all look at the were stats. alive when it happened. Let's That's what real, I'm saying. Bro. You just be like, oh, he had Shaq. Like, no, that was not the same Shaq, bro. And then for people that say, like, all right, without LeBron, it's like, all right, one, that's dumb. We already debunked the fact that he won without LeBron. Right. Two, if he doesn't have LeBron in 2011, he might win. Who knows? Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> LeBron was holding him back in 2011. That's all, listen, that's all I'm going to say. I'm just being honest. D-Way was hooping in 2011, and LeBron was the one that kind of held him back. I'm Obviously, I'm just joking. Like They probably won't get there. Like I'm just joking. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's like to act like he just got to carry – by LeBron or like just he had Shaq is like it's just so dumb because it lacks so much context. It just proves that like one you didn't watch it and two you didn't even do the research to go back and look at the stats. You didn't even need to watch twenty like two thousand six. That's one of the few occasions where if you just look at the box scores and the stats, it will tell you the, the full story, bro. Right. So it's like the argument to me is so stupid because I don't know. I, I like I, I forgot who. I was watching, it might have been the Through the Wire podcast, I forgot who it was, but they were saying that I think a lot of people have only seen the D-Wade with the later years, like mm-hmm. when he that's was with LeBron, have, really. that, that's, a, that's the only memory you really have of Dwayne Wade was when he was with LeBron, not even 2011, like past that where he was a good player, obviously, right. but he the wasn't knee like... injuries had racked up at that point. That's what I'm saying, like he wasn't D-Wade, so they just view him as this number two nothing more carried by this our goat lebron james like no bro it wasn't he wasn't like that bro not at all so i don't know i just think it lacks a lot of context and this whole argument is it's kind of stupid if i'm being honest bro and on top of that bro d wade did that that was his fourth season in the nba bro if d wade's injury if he didn't get injured so much who knows how good he really could have been? Like, D-Wade said it himself. He was like, bro, if I didn't get, like, hurt, like, if I didn't have these constant injuries, like, he feels like he would have been in the GOAT debate. Now, I'm not saying that, but just, like, that you just gotta, goes like, to show you. You got to say that if that's you, though. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Just, But that just goes to show you, like, that. And, like, when I, he said that, I wasn't like, what are you talking about? Like, he was talent-wise. Like <laughs> I'm going to say he was up there, bro. It's yeah. just unfortunate that his injuries kind of. Kind of messed up parts of his career, but to compare him to somebody who doesn't have any real playoff success, like is known for being a playoff choker, like that, like that is your thing. You are a playoff choker. It's like, bro, I don't care that you have a one an MVP. Like, okay, that's a regular season. I don't care. What does that mean? What does that mean to me? Y'all, right. y'all, y'all, like hate on Westbrook all the time. He got an MVP. Like. What the, what does the MVP do for me if you do nothing for me in in the in the playoffs, bro? D Wade got a Finals MVP. That's better than your MVP, bro. <laughs> I, I don't want us to come off as like hearted haters because I don't think either of us are. But it just is like nah, this, just, the this whole is context of this argument is like it, it's first of all, if you were somebody that's trying to say that D Wade got carried by LeBron, it, that's a crazy argument to make for a guy on James Harden who wanted to go and team up with Joel Embiid and is now trying to go and team up with Kawhi. And right. Kawhi. What are we doing, bro? What are we doing here, bro? He went with KD. He went left to join up with KD and Kyrie. It's like, bro, he's, what are y'all talking about, bro? How, what are, what, what are we about? talking about? Like, come on, bro. This argument is just so dumb, That does not bro. make sense. It's not even like you're just not being consistent at all. You're telling me that you want to devalue what D-Wade did because he was playing with LeBron. 
But this man <laughs> requested to get traded to Brooklyn and is actively now, and then <laughs> requested to get traded to Philly and is now trying to get traded to go play in, in Los Angeles. How many NBA 75 players is that? The only real argument that I can see if I'm playing devil's advocate that you should be trying to make, because y'all not even making the good arguments. Y'all are making the dumb arguments if you're on the James Harden side. The only arguments you should be making is that, like, James Harden could be more talented, like, if you take away accolades, which is all I always think is a dumb thing because it's like accolades are a part of it. But if you take away accolades, he's more talented of a player, which I would then go and say, is basketball all about scoring, or is it other parts right, of basketball? That's what I was about to say. Because you're is talking about like, talent, bro. Don't play no defense, though. So it's like, what are... Defense is a, that's a talent. That go like basketball. People think like basketball is just scoring. It's just offense. Like y'all, a lot of y'all think like KD, bro. We about, about to get into this Kevin Durant. Is, <laughs> is it offense or defense? The, like legitimately, like like you said, that's the the argument to go if you want to argue for James Harden. Like like we said, starting us off, like peak for peak. That run that Harden went on those years in Houston where he was like MVP level, won the MVP, was doing, putting up ridiculous. Anytime you start putting up stats and they start like, man, the only other person that does something like that is Will. You're doing something crazy. He's mm-hmm. putting up crazy stat lines. He was doing, scoring in, in ways that literally no one else had seen, had coaches doing weird stuff, trying to defend it. That's really the only argument I can hear for it is like in terms of just raw ability to score in his absolute prime versus the best version of D-Way we've seen. Yes, give me James Harden. Everything else. In reality, you put the context of their career side by side. Like mm-hmm. you give me D-Way 10 times out of 10. And it's like. It's not like D-Wade. Like, like D-Wade averaged 30 points a game a se- one season. He averaged 27 multiple seasons. It's like It's not like he's like... I, I'd see this argument if he was like a career, like he averaged 23 points per game most of his career. Like, no. That goes back to the people not really having watched the younger pre heatles pre-injuries D-Wade. Like, bro, D-Wade is... Listen, somebody said it, and I agree. They said D-Wade is closer to Kobe than Harden is D-Wade. I think that's true. I agree. I listen. Yeah, and I don't I, think he and that's it. and he's not even I don't think he's that close to Kobe. So that's really like saying that Harden is nowhere close to D-Wade to be. It's like bro, I'd rather give me the 30 points per game in elite level defense rather than the 30 what was it 36 points per game and I'm going to choke in the playoffs every year. I'm not Bro, I'm, and I'm like that. on top of all that, bro, we talked about it I think last episode. But the foul baiting is it's not fun to watch. It's not. It's worse because it's him and B together. But it just, it's not, I understand it. Like, if, and for people that think that it's just isolated to today's NBA players or guys like Harden, y'all are fooling yourself. If you threw Michael Jordan into today's NBA, you don't think he would do the same thing to get to the free throw line, he would flop. He would um, 100% would. Every, every single player sells calls. That's what they do. It's just the way that he does it and then B does it. That's like, bro, I cannot, bro. The minute somebody touches your arms, everything is like so exaggerated at times. It just makes it hard to watch. That's why I don't, I don't, I don't watch. Honestly, I really don't watch many 76ers regular season games. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, I really don't, I don't want to watch that. I'm sorry. That's what. I don't Pierre said the same thing fall. on Through the Wire. He was like, bro, I don't enjoy watching. <laughs> but D Mills was like, yeah, I watched like 30, 30 Sixers games. He's like, you're not telling me you watched 30 games of that. I'm Dude, not, bro. Seven I'm not footer watching. falling over James Harden. Every time he gets to the rack, he just throwing a ball into the stands because he got touched. I like, don't want to no watch way. that. That's just not it, like it's, it's the sad reality is like certain teams are just not. You could be a good team and not fun to watch. To like to each it's individual, fast. the Sixers to me like I don't unless it's a big game, you know what I mean? Or like I look at the box score or whatever, and Joel Embiid's going off, then maybe. But it's like hey, if he's going off in twelve of those or free throws, it's like ah, I don't know. I still might not tune in, but no, nah, they're just I don't. No one wants to see that foul baiting all the time, and I get why you do it. It's just to the viewer, it's really not that fun to watch. 
Yeah, but I, I think that's it. Like, like you said, offensively, just pure scoring. Peak powers, James Harden, cool. I can accept that because 36 points per game across the whole NBA season is crazy, especially, mm -hmm. like, it's not something we've seen for a long time. Anything else, any other argument, any other context you want, throw at it. I, I don't see it for Harden. And that's like, it shouldn't be that much of a slight to him. It's like Harden is still one of the greatest shooting guards ever. Just not better than D-Wade. Career is not better than D-Wade. In totality, like if I wanted a shooting guard on my team, I'm taking D-Wade just for the all of the aspects of basketball, not just his ability to score. This argument is just so stupid. I think it's, like, I've never seen somebody, I've never seen an argument this lopsided before get debated so heavily on Twitter. Like, it's so dumb, bro. Like, at least, like, the GOAT debate, you know, like, there's points to be made. This argument is dumb. Like, people argue, you know what's weird? People argue, like, consensus stuff on here just because, like, people argue stuff that, it's like, the off we, season, bro. People yeah, bored. like, we. Bro, we bro, and you know what's another one that's going on? We don't got to get into it because that one you can go forever with this one. And I'm seeing like people debating uh, if Hakeem better than Tim Duncan. I've seen oh. that one a lot recently. I got all Rockets and Spurs Twitter on my timeline, and it's just like back and forth. Like, could could Tim Duncan put up these stats? And the right. Spurs players are like. <laughs> Tim Duncan got five rings. How many Hakeem got? It's like I'm going back and forth on two different arguments. Like I'm it's arguing like, two different things. It's like where did this come from? Like, bro, what? People just we be are, all season we're be bored. bored. <laughs> we are bored. Everybody's trying to get clicks and likes somehow. Bro, it's they, like, what are we talking about, bro? How did this even come about? How? You know, this is the deadest of the deadest of the off season. That's why that. Who is even interviewing Michael Jordan's trainer right now to ask him about Jordan and versus LeBron's shoes? Like, but like for what? For what? What is the what is your purpose right now, bro? Just stirring up problems for no reason. And bro, I really when you think about it, that's a crazy response. Like Michael Jordan's trainer saying, "We've all heard stories about individuals getting robbed for their Jordan." <laughs> you ever heard a <laughs> You ever heard a story of somebody getting stuck for a pair of bronze? What, bro? Like, what? That's crazy. That, that is, people just do anything, bro. People really just do anything because it's like once you once you start bringing up like off the court stuff in a basketball debate, let's just stop having a debate. Like, what we're are we not, talking about? We're not talking basketball no more. Like, what is that? What if like? Has Michael Jordan ever opened up a school? Like, like what are you talking about? Like, like let's just stop talking about the debate now. Like, just like, now we're just comparing these guys' lives. Like, is this guy a better person than the other guy? Like, let's, let's just not do this. <laughs> right, we're we're getting too far off the topic if we're if we're talking is guy, about. Jordan's is this guy married Ross. with kids? And this guy is this guy's kids hot top high school players? Like, bro, let's stop, bro. This debate is getting. I've seen somebody for real do that and be like. Bro, my, neither one of Michael Jordan's sons really panned out to be anything. Bonnie about to be in the NBA. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, his genes are better. You know what I mean? He's clearly <laughs> a better basketball player. He got better genes. Like, we're Bro, going too far. As much as I've really been like, you know, people have been like, or mostly girls in general, like, they'll be watching reality TV. Like, y'all just love the drama. Like, where, what? Are you, there's not even any substance here. It's not. Sports it's fans and NBA fans in general. Y'all have a lot of the same traits. <laughs> yeah, like drama, bro. Kind of things. Like, what are we actually talking about? We're not even talking about basketball. Yeah, you we're debating up. if somebody like, like you said earlier, bro, who has better aura? What? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> what are we bro. talking about? Bro, bro, fans like drama, bro. I'm sorry, <laughs> like, bro, we is no better than them watching reality TV, bro. We are. This is reality TV. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, another thing that came out, you see Dr. J's top 10? Bro. <laughs> For the people listening Bro. and watching who haven't heard it yet, he was on, I don't even, this is somebody's podcast. I don't know who got this information out of him. But um, top 10 of all time, no order. I don't think a single person on this list played, the latest one was, was Jordan. So his last year was what, 02? <laughs> no one in the last two decades, they haven't seen a court.
court <laughs> in the last <laughs> two years. I'm not talking about like retirement. Like they have not played. He almost doesn't have any players up here that played in the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry West. Oscar Robertson, Elgin Baylor, Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, Carl Malone. That's dis- disgusting. That's Should wild. That's crazy. Cra- that's crazy. <laughs> and then Nate Tiny Archibald. Top 10 player of all time. <laughs> Bro. Bro, what are we even talking about? <laughs> Bro, it's like, you know, it's crazy. And he believes that with his soul because he didn't put himself. He didn't even but, say himself. But he he played against almost all of those guys, I think, except for um I don't think he ever played against Michael. And I don't think his timeline ever synced up with Magic either. Or Carl Malone. So those three are the only three. But he's played against I'm pretty sure every single other person on his list. Hey man, I'm not gonna lie. I just pulled up basketball reference. <laughs> Tiny Archibald. That my team that. card used to go crazy. He had a season. He had 34 points per game, 11 assists with the can with the Kansas City Omaha Kings. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying, bro. That's a, that's a wild stat line. That's a, that's an OG stat line, bro. See, look, this is uh, bro. This is why we got to get OG on the pod, bro. Because I need somebody who was watching some of these guys, bro. Bro, I don't I don't even need to watch to know that that top ten is. <laughs> that's crazy. That, like, and that's why a lot of the times, um, like people debating top tens. Nah, hold up, who are, bro, bro. hold up, bro. I what just pulled up. I pulled up the same stats, bro. His man's career started before they tracked steals, blocks, <laughs> offensive, <laughs> defensive. Re- they not even tracking everything yet, bro. <laughs> that is crazy, bro. Uh, it's like, bro, certain people. <clears throat> That are just clearly, clearly biased to whether it be old, like old school, your time, like your team, or just whatever. It's like at that point, why are we even talking about top tens? But you have Nate Tiny Archibald in your top ten. Over going through it, I was shocked to see Jordan. I'm like, like bro, not nah, bro. <laughs> him and him and uh, Karl Malone, like they're the only people from the '90s really up here, like. Magic kind of bled into that a little bit, but most of his dominance is in the the eighties. It's just like he's like say, wild stuck in his ways. Wow, twenty first century players on this list, which like, means you really just don't like today's brand of basketball. You don't, and you don't think none of, like that list just doesn't even make sense. That list just doesn't even make sense at all. That means yeah. you think like they uh, now like they can't even compete with them guys back then because the stats aren't better. Like those guys' stats aren't better than any of the guy like any of the. Well, the some of them did put up crazy stats, but like again, tiny Archibald, bro. Like they're playing, bro. Elgin Baylor's first season was in 1958, bro. At how many teams are in the the NBA at that point? Who who are these players? A lot of these dudes sitting even bro, eight teams. Eight. Well, eight that, bro. teams, bro. And this I'm like, look, I'm not trying to disrespect any legends, especially not a guy like Elgin, because I know about Elgin. But th- look, so what I'm saying is it's no way. It's no way you're telling me that you can't put LeBron in his top ten. You can't put Kobe, a Tim Dunk, like Hakeem, like people. You know what's crazy? That, that means like playing you, from that long ago. Yeah, like you not even you don't even respect like the era in the nineties. Like you know I'm saying, it just was Carl Malone and Michael Jordan. How did Carl Malone get on this list? <laughs> yeah, like what? <laughs> if you gonna pick anybody, why would you pick Carl Malone? Like what? Like and you I, he like, don't even. Res- it's like I I it'd make at least a little bit more sense if he didn't have like you know like. Players like now, like Kobe, Braun, Steph. Like, if he didn't have those guys, but he had, like, MJ, Hakeem, Shaq, all them. Like, he just said, nah, bro. If you wasn't in black and white, you wasn't hooping. <laughs> if you wasn't hooping in, <laughs> and in Converse, bro, you wasn't hooping. I'll be straight up with it. I'm being biased, bro. I'm not, I don't want to see Carl Malone on no all-time nothing. I don't, I don't care if he was – he could be the greatest player i ever seen walking. I never going to be on no list of mine, bro. Carl Malone will never – if we ever do, like, a top – 
10 top five power forwards ever, bro. That so name you could give me the top 100. Give me Thanasis onto the Kumpo before mm-hmm. Cole Malone, bro. That name will not be getting talked up on this podcast. That's not happening. Like, the, yeah. we, you will never get a he accomplished it and he was the no, no, thank you. Mm-mm. I mean, it should be in jail, <laughs> prison, <laughs> prison, bro. That is sick. If you don't know about Carl Malone, bro, Google and find out. Yeah, bro. That man is sick. But yeah, like you said, if you wasn't hooping in Converse, <laughs> if it you wasn't had black a, and if, white, if you had a three point line, <clears throat> if you was hooping in schools was segregated, you I just must say, wasn't like that. If bro. it wasn't racist, bro, you ain't really, you wasn't really hooping, bro. If they have really a hooping. separate water fountain, <laughs> man, there wasn't no real hoops. There was no war going on, basically. You wasn't open, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> you was not playing real pure bro. basketball, bro. That That's... is wow. And he followed it up to our, this must have been the same interview because he he had that quote about uh about KD and basically basically called KD soft. <laughs> Say he he don't like what he's doing for basketball, what he's doing with these super teams. Um I don't know. Dr. J, he's not feeling I can't even say the new generation. Like I, I said, he, the new the old, century. Yeah, he's not feeling none of this, bro. None of that. Yeah, that's, bro. That, that is might a be, crazy top yeah, ten. That, that might be one of the worst top tens ever. And then you, yeah, and then we'll get people talking about some, bro. He played. He knows what he's talking about. He play, He's he's a hall of famer. How can you how can you disagree with this guy? He's a hall of famer. Nah, bro. Just because you a hall of famer, just because you play ball, I don't mean you know more basketball than most people, bro. We I'm can sorry. see, but like it's just, it's just clearly biased, right? Like he, like I said, he played against. I'm pretty sure seven or eight out of the ten guys on this list. <laughs> like what, he was what like, eh. they would. He was like, Man, bro, Tiny Archibald used to give me work. He's a problem. <laughs> like I, I can respect that. I would never have the experience of playing as an NBA player against <laughs> anybody. <laughs> I like you know how crazy that is though. Like, but yeah, Tiny Ultra Bowl, he had a couple of games against me. He better than Braun. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, what? Bro, I, so wish crazy. They, I wish they would have followed up and been like, you just had to ballpark it. Like, top player, give like you just gotta give me a range. Where would you put LeBron? Right. Because like, like 20. <laughs> eight ish? <laughs> right, like, <laughs> like Bro, I genuinely don't think I've ever heard in across any former player, current player, media, fan, Twitter, rando, Instagram comment. Never seen somebody say Tiny Archibald is <laughs> top 10 player of all time. That is nuts, bro. That is nuts. Bro, oh my God. Dr. J need to get drug tested. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> can't, I can't believe that, bro. I can't believe that. Um, apparently, uh, <laughs> this is how you know it's the dead of the offseason, bro. Kendrick Nunn about to go play overseas with Kemba. Oh my god, like, yeah, we are in the dead of the offseason. Yeah, I'm about to say, what are we even talking about? I'm literally just scrolling through NBA Central to make sure I'm not missing something. Clint Capella, apparently, the Mavericks want him. Makes sense to me. I was about to say that makes sense. Mm-mm-mm. I wish they got. As you know, I'm glad they didn't get Thibel. Because I wish they would have. I really like. I that. know you do, but like as a Laker, did someone in that conference? <laughs> I'm straight. I don't need them to get no no better. I hope, bro. I hope he could find. I don't even want to say a jump shot because I think it goes more beyond that. Like I think he just needs to find how to play on offense <laughs> in the NBA. For real, like. He, it's so yeah. crazy to see someone who's so, like, his IQ, his instincts defensively is, like, in the elite, elite tier <laughs> on the defensive side of the ball. And then it's, like, none of that carries over to the offensive side of the ball. I feel like he don't be knowing when to cut. He'd be open. He'd be, ah, do I shoot? Do I not shoot? If I do shoot, I'd be bricking it. Like, I, so I got weird. nothing to provide there. But you would clamp up your best player ninety four feet. You would think that offense would come more natural to any just a human being playing basketball. That like offense would come more natural than defense, but I guess not. Who knows? I, look, I hope the like the super low pressure there in Portland they keep him and like I just bro, I just need 
33% on like three corner threes. That's, That's it, bro. It's all, just, all you need. You just have to be not someone they could just not guard on the other side of the ball. That's so what I be saying, bro. That's why, bro. They, I don't care who you are, bro. There's no. I don't care if you're a defensive specialist, like a guy like Vanderbilt, Thibault, bro. Get a corner three. You don't even need to shoot from the wing top like, corner. That's all you need. Both corners shoot a, a a thousand shots a day from both corners, bro. That's all I need. And then you could do, go do defensive slides for the rest of your off season. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a corner three from you, bro. Um. People been going crazy in some pro ams too. What's his name? Uh oh, the dude from the Bucks, where? Marshawn Pochamp put up yeah. eighty three in the cross. Bro, that really goes to show, like I know it, it's always examples and it happens in the offseason every time. It's like, bro, just how good like the the NBA players that don't even get ticked like that, whether they're young or just they just old vet, whatever. They will go, you even got to say YMCA, Lifetime Fitness, whatever. Like, bro, they're playing against other pros, like other dudes that's playing overseas in the G, whatever it is. 83, like, easy. He's not even really trying. Bro, like, <laughs> it's like, yo, dudes are really so, like, I don't think people really realize how good people like these NBA players really are, bro. But I remember I was in college playing open gym, bro. And this dude came in, and when I tell you, bro, he cooked us like, like Is he a, like the, a D one player or something, bro. Listen, he cooked it like this open gym run, and I'm talking about like he's cooking people that like normally are cooking other people in open gym, like mm -hmm. nice, like play ball in high school or whatever, and like. Like, do ask him afterwards, like, yo, like, you playing for the team? This is like a D1, I think Central D1, football, yeah. something like that. He's like, you playing for the team? He said, nah, I ain't make it. He's like, I wasn't good enough. I was like, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Man, when I tell you, like, he is like, I'm thinking, like, bro, he's the starting point guard for this team. Like, he's, he's like, nah, I just wasn't good enough. I was like, and that was college. And I'm like, bro, how good are His one, levels. the college players, and then, the bench players, and then the role players, and then the star players, and then the superstars. What? Like it's levels, bro. bro. It's levels. I just did not make, but it just don't make no sense, bro. It don't it dudes be too good at basketball? It's on insane. Your, on your best day, possibly like you could have stretched, warmed up. You already played a game, shot, feeling fantastic, handles feel crisp, tight. Bounce Brian Scalabrini could walk out his bed just like yawning. Damon changes his clothes, still in his PJs, still getting the crust out of his eyes, and he giving you 21 straight. That's so crazy, bro. Like, it's, it's just different, different. <sighs> in pronouns, we having people think that he's like everybody was going crazy in the pronouns. Because Payne Pritchard dropped like 70 in a pro am game last year, he can't even get ticked this year for, for Boston. Campaign had like fifty in one of them pro game. Like, bro, it just be anybody, bro. I want to be that good at basketball for one day. One day, you just be like, bro, like for this day, you are Stephen Curry, just to know what it's like to really just be like, bro. There's no one on the planet that can like tie my shoes right now. Like, there's no one on the planet that can even come close to me in this sport. Like, it's so crazy. I was watching uh Steph did hot ones recently, and the dude asked him. um if he felt like getting hot was a real thing. Cause apparently there's some study that some psychological study that they did that said that, um, that sensation of like, you get like locked in, in the zone. Like that's not really real. There's no like believe that. mirror behind it. Steph was like, brass cap. <laughs> he was like, I know when I get it going. He's oh, like, you mean like the study was cap? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. No, he was like, yeah. He said, when I get it going, he was like, I know as soon as the ball leaves my finger whether it went in or not. Bro, and it's I, like yeah. when I'm locked in, he's like, I, bro, it, the ball leaves my hand. It's in. I know it's in. <laughs> nah, that's what I said. That study is completely false because, like, even on a lesser level, like just 
playing any sport on a regular. Like, bro, you dude, could be, I could be locked in on two K. I'd like. I feel. And I know, I, bro. And I know it's going. I'm green it every shot. I'm not missing nothing. My internet not lagging. Like we're good. <laughs> bro, you can, bro. That zone feeling is in anything in life, bro. That's just life in general. Like, mm -hmm. nah. Out of whatever study that was, fire them scientists or something. Yeah. Like, it, it was not. No, I'm telling you, bro. Like get getting hot in basketball might be like the greatest like feeling in the world. Like even if it's just awesome, like we're going to the park and we're just hooping, like bro, getting high in basketball is so bro, it is so much fun, bro. It is yeah. so much fun. Yeah. I'm out here talking like I'm Steph Curry or something, but like nah, like just genuinely getting high in basketball gotta be like one of the best films in the world. Get real life takeover. Real Not life. Not for real. Get that grand, grand badge. badge. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Did you watch the um? You watched the Spence uh, Bud Crawford fight, right? Mm -hmm. Who'd you have going into it? <laughs> I was <laughs> well. I didn't have. I didn't know who was gonna win. But I was talking to a girl's uncle who knew boxing. Was like, "Yo, it's gonna be 50-50. I was like, "All right, cool." Throw a little, you know what I'm saying? Throw a couple bucks on each round for Spence to win. Because he said it was going to be 50 50, but he said, yo, I got Spence winning. I just did it. Like, he boxed before. I mean, he's a boxer or was a boxer. He watched boxing all the time. He watched both of these guys all their fights. He's like, yo, Spence winning. And it's going to go the distance. I was like, all right, cool. The odds was plus 10,000 on each round for Spence. I'm like, bro, I bet $1, you want $100. I bet $2, I get $200. Like, Bro, I'm throwing two dollar bets on That's each too round. Crazy odds. You about to? I would have thrown like thirty. That's what, bro. And I'm just like three bro. racks. Oh yeah. And that's what. And the only reason why I ain't throw mad bracks, I'm like, bro, these odds is too crazy. Like other people seeing these, like these is too crazy. They're not gonna let us all hit. Like I gotta throw a little five. I threw a couple fives. I threw a two. I threw. You know what I'm saying? A couple ones. All right. This man lost every single round. <laughs> But the first one, the, the first one that he, that my, that uncle told me to not to bet on because the first one's going to be a draw. I'm like, that was the only round he won, gang. Come I, on, I, bro. I ain't catch it live, but shout out to somebody on Twitter who uploaded the whole fight, the whole 35 <laughs> minutes of it. Bro. Rocking. Surgical. Surgical. Like they, they was talking about the whole time, the accuracy. Punch. Yeah, the accuracy was crazy with his punches, bro crazy like i really did not expect that fight to be that lopsided the way that they was hyping it up yeah they made it seem like bro it was it's 50 50 like it can go, it's gonna go to distance like it like these guys are like here like neck and neck bro like when i watch like well i mean i'd never seen either of these guys fight before just from what i've seen that dude is not on his level <laughs> like not on his level at all like even the crawford dude said it in the interview he was like um like after like the first or second round, like he felt his punches, he was like, "That's it." Like, like he that's knew he. Had, no, that's no, what he said. He was like, "Like that's all he got." Like that he knew since that point, like it was over. You got it. Like boxers are different, bro. To take a punch from an undefeated boxer and be like, "This it, bro." That's like that's all that's you all got. The power you got. Like after this, he probably knocked out like twenty people before he fought him. <laughs> that's all you were swinging with. Oh bro, my God. you know what's even worse? You know, you know how demoralizing it must feel to like, bro. Say you get like one clean hit, like right. all your strength, boom, and he just like, <laughs> bro. I would be like, stop the fight. Bro, that's, I'm good. That's I'm all good. I had. I got nothing. More. <laughs> That's nothing all I had, more. bro. And then he hit you with a jet. Like that's what really would it look like though. Like he would hit him with like some haymaker, boom. He just eat it. Then bro come back with a jab. He. Like getting rocked. I'm His like, eyes was tore up like he just had an allergic reaction, bro. He looked like a whole different person after the fight. Yeah, that whole was different crazy. person. I really I like where boxing is going though, because they had the long stretch where everybody wants to be undefeated so bad that you nobody got wants dude, to fight nobody. You got dudes that's like 39 and oh. You got somebody else in their division that's also like 35 and oh. Both of y'all fighting people that's like only had nine fights. <laughs> right. Nobody wants to put their Fight each other, bro. on the line, right? So I like that Tank Davis and Garcia fought. They feel like they kind of starting a trend. Now you have boy, this last one with Bud Crawford and Errol Spence. Now it's apparently, uh, what's his name? Devin Haney and Shakur Stevenson might go at it. Like him and Lomachenko are just going at it. Um, it's another guy. Was it? I don't remember. I always forgot to pronounce his name. Like Noya or something. I think he's Japanese. Um he apparently is nice. He undefeated. They think that him and um, 
what's his name? He could go at it potentially. I think he's way too. I think he actually is too light to go up against um, Bud Crawford. But like pound for pound, and both of them are like neck and neck. I think in a lot of people's eyes. But I'm glad that it's going back this way because. To me, boxing is better in UFC because I can't stand watching a UFC fight that gets so gory on the grab. Not not the gore. I'm talking about the grappling. Uh-huh. Like, oh, you say you don't like watching the grab, like the wrestling part of it, basically. Like, I I can appreciate the technicality and like I understand it's mad technical and like weight distribution and like I get all of that. I appreciate it. I understand it. I'm not trying to watch three rounds of this dude holding a guy down on the mat. <laughs> just won't let him roll <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah no i think boxing box. is more to me is more is way more entertaining to watch like yeah. i like watching a good ufc fight don't get me wrong but like boxing is just like i don't know it's something about like you really can like you see like you can see the counters like you see the right. punch come you see the technique like i like i like watching boxing. in between rounds of having me in the kitchen like whoa bro i, I was in whoa. the fight bro how you think i felt i had money on it i'm in there like Spence, duck, <laughs> protect your head. I'm like, bro, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to coach him off. I'm thinking I'm in his corner. He wasn't listening to me, bro. That's the problem. He wasn't listening. That was his problem. I'm over here getting rocked. <laughs> bro, it's crazy because, like, the third round, but it was like a minute left. I'm like, oh, I just secured, like, $300. Like, he winning around. I know he's winning around. He's clocking him. And, like, he just, he overextended, left all this open. I was like, oh, my God, it's over. Boom. We robbed him, put him against the corner, started hitting him. I was like, bro, he just sold my bread, bro. <laughs> I just watched him sell my bread live, bro. Oh, Vegas never loses, bro. Vegas never loses. Never betting again, bro. Odds are too crazy. Should have knew something was up. I said it, too. I was like, bro, he's going to get knocked out first round. What these odds looking? 10 plus, 10,000. People, you know how much bread people probably put on that? Plus 10,000 is crazy. I know, bro, I seen a, somebody tweeted that somebody had put up I think it was like 160k, like straight up on Errol Spence to win. You know, but the type of money you gotta have to be like, yeah, bro, 160k on this dude, and he lose. I'm, I'm hopeful that you, you comfortable enough in life to just be like, oh, that's tough. I don't think I'll ever be that comfortable in life. Never, ever. no. I don't way. think I'll ever be that unless I'm. Nah, I mean, like, eat, bro, that's a lot of money. I'm sorry. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't do it on something that was a lot. Like you could. You could present me right now with if you gave me a hundred thousand dollars and it was something like, "Is LeBron gonna make the Hall of Fame?" I'm like, I just don't think I could do it. Bro. <laughs> I don't want to take that risk. <laughs> that's a lot. To, that sounds like a lot. I know it's a lot. I can't do it, bro. I can't. I ain't, I can't push that button. I can't I'm push sorry, that bro. button. Blood pressure. Gun. I'm gonna have a heart attack before he even get in there and win my bread, bro. I can't <laughs> I'm not, I'm never gonna get my money back. Nah, I can't do it. And can't you know the odds gonna be crazy. Like <laughs> you bet a hundred thousand to win fifty cents. <laughs> Literally, uh, people be doing that though. People did that with Jokic in Finals MVP. Like after like game was it four, where it was like it's pretty much locked up that he was gonna be Finals MVP. Dudes was dropping like ten thousand to win like a hundred bucks. It's a free hundred. Someday, sometimes you just gotta see one go through the net, bro. Until Jokic get hurt and then Jamal Murray tweak and then you just lost ten thousand. That's what I'm saying, bro. You can't never. I'm not. No, anything can happen, bro. Do not. I'm not putting up no money. I'm not comfortable with losing. And you know, I don't care if I was a billionaire. I'm never gonna be comfortable losing no hundred k. Facts. But. With that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of the Off the Glass podcast. We will be ranking the top 10 small forwards on next episode, so be sure to tune into that. Um, If you made it all the way to the end of the episode, we appreciate you as always. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, audio platforms, five-star reviews, and pre-download the show, and follow the socials on the bottom of the screen. Um, We appreciate the support as always, um, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.